Abe. Abe, come on, it's time to go home. Oh, yeah. How do you feel? Okay. You want a lift? No, thanks, Nick. I'll make it. Well, it's, uh, it's time for your ulcer. Come on. Yeah, time for my ulcer. There's only one cure for an ulcer, and that's retirement. I know that. Two months from now, I'll be throwing those things away. What is all this stuff? Huh? Oh, well, yeah, there were uh, three felonies. I didn't get around to the affidavits. Aren't they, Kim? And some guy was trying to get in touch with you. I told him to work at night. He kept calling back. You don't remember his name, by chance, do you? Well, it's uh, somewhere. <laughs> oh. Ulysses Frost. He's trying to pump me for your home number. I wouldn't give it. No, he's all right down here. I grew up with him. He's an old friend of mine. Yeah. Well, I hope he's still there. Good night. Good night, Abe. I want you to know you've been a shot in the arm. Abe, hey, is this a three here or an eight? That's probably a three. Or an eight. <laughs> Good night. Mr. Ulysses Frost. Yes? Yuli, this is Hawk. How are you, buddy? I thought you were in Europe. John, I'm at the Riverside Plaza Hotel, room 724. I've got to see you. Say hello first, man. How are you? I'm in a bind. I've got to see you right now. Hold it. They sent me up. The door was open, locked, shut out. I walked in, nobody was home. The phone was back on. And pretty scary, huh? Don't start cultivating your kicks just yet. Where's this window go to? The alley. Cuts into the street. Is that a double door? Yeah. Leads to adjoining rooms. Uh, they're both locked. You want in? No. Mr. Frost, have any luggage with him? I don't know. I want none duty. All right, let's go. Hello. John, is that you? Hey, uh, all right. I've been chased. i got to see you. Where the devil are you? Outside phone. West end of 75th. All right, come to my apartment. It's 35 Riverside Drive, apartment 2D. Thanks, John.
Kan? Shot. I saw the man who shot him, Lieutenant Falk. I saw Open the door, Mrs. Lane. Open the door, Mrs. Lane. Just open the door, please, Mr. Lane. Get the light. There's some towels and a first aid kit in the bathroom. Get up. Who did it? Who did this, Julie? Who shot you? Thank you. I better call an ambulance. No. Good night, Mrs. Leslie. Oh, I see what. Well, call me if you need me. John? Don't try to talk, Julie. I'll call a doctor. Don't. Julie, you lost a ton of blood. This is out of my league, Yuli. I'll call my doctor and he'll keep it confidential. John. Yuli, don't try to talk now. Yuli. Fire. Yuli, we'll talk Fire. later. The fire. Fire. As soon as the doctor gets here, I'll call your kid's sister. We'll take good. Give me the 19th Division homicide. How many men were there? Three. I saw one very clearly. I'm going to want you to go down to police headquarters later. Describe the man you saw to the police artist. Homicide? It's Lieutenant Hawk, the DA squad. I want to report a murder. I'd like the body flown home. You'll attend to it. Sure. I'm sorry I had to drag you down the mortuary. Well, there was no one else. I can't uh, abdicate your responsibilities on the grounds of being heartsick. There are a couple of details, Tina, I think you should answer. Uh, details? The medical examiner's report about Yuli's death. Uh, do we have to grind this out, John? Well, the airline has to have you signed affidavit that Yuli's body they're flying home. I know they usually fly. A night. It's been quite a reunion, hasn't it? For all of us. Are you up to answering some questions? Yeah. Police questions? No, not now. Well, if I don't ask them, somebody else will. Yuli was murdered, you know. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yes, it's me. I'm not that 14-year-old girl anymore. Yuli changed, too. What was he mixed up in? I didn't say he was mixed up in anything. You didn't have to say it. He left for Europe five years ago. I haven't seen him since or, or talked to him. He came home and died in your arms, not mine. Maybe you're the one with the answers, not me. What did he do in Europe? 
I don't know. He never told me. Why'd you go to Europe in the first place? Why not? Are you going to go home with Yuli's body? No. What's wrong, Gina? What happened between you and Oh, Luke? please, John! Let me remind you of something. Your brother's body is in the mortuary with a bullet hole in it. Now, you're going to have to answer these questions sooner or later. Just leave me alone, won't you? I, I can't help you. His life, his death, they're a mystery to me. I, I don't want to unravel any part of it either. What about his killer? You care about that? He's your affair. This is quite a reunion. What's that supposed to mean? John, I have to tell you, Yuli's life wasn't paved with brilliant achievement. I stepped out of it a long time ago. I'm out and well out of his death. You still haven't told me why, Dina. Please, I can't. I won't. As far as the police are concerned, you're not out of it at all. Tina, I'll see you again. If it's official, uh, I won't see you unless my lawyers are present. Too, son. Not gonna get any overtime, huh? Thanks for reminding. Why don't you go get me a glass of water, huh? What's the matter? Now don't ask me how I feel. All right. How you feel? Thanks. Corey's still down at the Prince Street Station on the narcotics run. And Joe switches off tonight. Larry's still at the hospital. His wife's still in labor? Yeah. Five kids, she still has trouble. Plain clothes is short-handed, otherwise I would have asked him. I'm afraid they hit the roof. What's eating you, John? You give me more apologies in the last 30 seconds than you have in the last six years, you know that? I don't know, Abe. There's just something about this whole mess that stinks. Yeah. Well, I'm through here. Listen, I want to get these prints and compare them with the ones you got in my apartment. Get them off to Washington right away. Right away? You mean now, in the middle of the night? No. Okay, John. Ulysses Frost. No, we never got that bullet extraction. You said that already. Well, I mean, I never got it up here, ballistics and weapons. You check receiving? Uh-huh. They never got it either. They would have sent it right up. Well, then who got it? Somebody must have gotten it. Well, maybe it's over at Division. Division? Hmm. Well, it was death by a gunshot. Now, what would it be doing over at Division? Weren't you notified of that? Yes, I was. By whom? Homicide. What time? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Well, by now, you should have had a full report of the bullet markings and the type of weapon. 
but I never got it, Lieutenant. I, um, I called Mortuary, and they said they didn't know anything about it. Who'd you talk to over there? Well, I don't know, sir. Now, let me get this straight. You made a phone call pertinent to the death of a man by gunshot. And you didn't bother to find out who you were talking to? I just forgot. You forgot? <laughs> I bet you didn't forget to log your time, though, did you? <laughs> If there's a communications foul up around here, it's not my fault. All right, let's set back and count our fingers, shall we? Number one, you received a photograph of the deceased victim, right? Yeah, at the mortuary, prior to post-mortem. Excuse me. Yeah. OK, send it up to the fifth floor. All right, number two, you received the clothes and the personal effects of the victim. No, sir. Well, why not? Well, I don't know. All I received was the picture. How? By hand. Photography brought it in. Well, they usually wait for the examiner to give them the clothes, too, but they were told to leave. By the examiner? No, sir. Well, by who? The first deputy commissioner. You mean Hahn? Yes, sir. At the mortuary? That's right, Lieutenant. Mm, sorry, Lieutenant, I don't know the doctor's name. How many post-mortems have you performed tonight? Since I've been on? Yeah. None. How long have you been on? Well, about uh, 20 minutes. A postmortem was performed tonight on one Ulysses Frost. Now, how come it's not recorded down here in your book? Oh, don't ask me. I wasn't on. Well, is it possible that the man you relieved was, uh, was drunk? Or maybe he doesn't give a plug nickel about what goes on around here. He's got 18 years in mortuary division. You've got no call to say that. Are the receipts and the dispositions always recorded down here in this book? Yes. Who is that, Marcia Grant? Suicide. Subway, jump in front of the train. Did anyone claim the body? No. According to this book, she was the only one brought in tonight, is that right? Yes, sir. I'd like to take a look at the body. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Right now. <laughs> I think the idea is a legitimate one. You're flying your brother home to Oregon. He was Hawk's best friend. You want Hawk at the burial. I've already told him that I was not going home for the burial. Well, you can tell him you've had a change of heart. After all, there are no other relatives. No, there are no other relatives. The body's at the airport, Miss Frost. We've made all the arrangements for you. Well, how can you ask me to do that? It's sure to come out. I've worked too hard and too long to risk it. I cannot be associated with my brother's past. You know that I'm managing the campaign for Arnold Shields. I can't risk any bad publicity. I won't go near that airplane. One day's flight. A day for the burial, a day back, three days. You can arrange to have that time off. What do I tell Mr. Shields? That there's been a death in the family? No, I'd rather you didn't. Jeopardy on this is already too wide. What about my jeopardy? Excuse me. Yes? Lieutenant Hawk is here. He's very anxious to see you. Tell him to wait. Yes, sir. I suppose there's nothing I can say to make you change your mind. I'm sorry, my decision was final. Now, I'd rather you didn't meet Lieutenant Hawk here. Will you come out this way, please? Good night, Inspector Hahn. Thank you for your visit, Miss Frost. Marie. Yes, sir. Send Hawk in. Right away, sir. What is it, Lieutenant Hawk? What's going on around here? What do you mean? I mean crime detection, a laboratory, the mortuary. I can't get the time of day out of them. In regard to what? Sit down. I don't want to sit down. In regard to murder. <laughs> you throw that word around as though it had some special significance in this office. The victim was a boyhood friend of mine, Ulysses Frost. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I'm sorry. These things take time, Lieutenant. You're a little too personally involved with this case. Every department has... 
certain channels of resistance. Channels of resistance? Is that what they call brick walls these days? You're not a night watchman in the carnival, Lieutenant. This is the largest municipal police force in the world. And this is a case of murder. Which homicide is eminently equipped to take care of. I just want to know what's going on around here, that's all. Nothing is going on. There are domains of competence and levels of jurisdiction at work here, Hawk. You're not a green provisional right out of the police academy. Homicide is on this, and that should satisfy you. What does that mean? That the facilities of homicide are closed to me? They were never open to you. You're the DA's man. If you don't know what your job is, let me tell you. I know what my job is. I want to be temporarily reassigned to homicide to work on this case. Not possible. Why not? Because you're too personally involved, for one. I plead guilty to that, but I don't see what that's got to do with it. More important, you're assigned as of right now to the Bureau of Weights and Measures. The what? You heard me. What are you talking about? For work on the scale of frauds which is going before the grand jury in one week's time. Well, I can't accept that assignment. Deputy Commissioner Barnaby has requested your transfer. I don't care if the mayor assigned it to me. Would you accept as an alternative a suspension on a departmental trial for insubordination? All right, it's your department. Very close, Lieutenant Hawk. Remarkable. Well, it was a slow process, wasn't it? Well, it was the nose. We went through a great assortment of noses before we got the right one. Sergeant Katina. Yes, sir. Do you mind giving Mrs. Lazar a ride home? I'd be glad to. He loves to take charming ladies home. Oh, he always says the funniest things. Isn't that the truth? I appreciate it. When they were carrying your friend out, all those policemen, they made an awful mess of your place. I'll go in and straighten it out. Well, thank you. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant Hawk. Good night, Lieutenant Good night, Miss Lazar. Well, if you think they kept me out in the cold, well, they put this through process, I'll freeze it out for sure. They certainly will. So lay off, John. Just let homicide run it through. Yeah, let homicide run it through while one of my best friends is lying on a slab over in the morgue with a tag on his John, foot. John, John. John, What do you want me to do, go out and check and see if there's 16 hey, ounces in a pound? Listen. I've been on this job more years than you've been out of grade school. You know well, that. you're a real patriot, Abe. Hooray for you. Just back off a minute, son. You dragged me out of bed, remember? I'm here on my own time. Yeah, that's right. I did, didn't I? I forgot. I'm sorry, sir. Don't make waves, huh? That's all I ask. You're not going to do yourself any good. You're not God. I'm not Job, either. I guess there's nothing I can do about it. Unless maybe you Unless not. They'll kill. Maybe. Unless you put it through. Oh. With who? I mean, just for starters, who will? Now, for starters, the hack bureau. I couldn't push this through the hack bureau in 25 yeah, years. I know you couldn't, but you got a buddy down there, don't you? Oh, Vasey? Yeah, yeah Vasey. I know Vasey. Well, we'll have Vasey put a decoy on it. What do you mean? What came in tonight? I don't know. Well, there's a car theft, a couple of DOAs, a subway jumper, liquor store heist. Any identification with any of them? We ought to get one on the liquor store heist. Well, there you are. We'll have Basie run this through as a liquor store suspect. Okay, John. If you find out anything, Abe, don't bring it back here to the office. Where do you want it? My apartment. You can give it to Mrs. Liza. Answer my questions and we'll let you go. <laughs> Hello, Abe. What do you hear from Basie? Well, I just talked to the hack bureau. He ought to be walking in on me any minute. How'd he take working on this line? He thinks I'm nuts and I think he's right. You still want me to bring it to Mrs. Lyser? Yeah, if there is anything. Yeah, <laughs> if there is anything. On second thought, Abe, uh, you've gone out on a limp far enough. Have Vasey take it over to Christine Frost's apartment. I want to show her the picture, too. Maybe it'll put some heat in those icy veins. All right, John. 
Okay. Hey, hi, Sam. Agent 44, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, any luck? Division of licenses, negative. Swell. Health department, barbershop unit, negative. Terrific. Fire department, junk dealers, negative. Wonderful. Hack bureau, contact. No, don't pass it here. Oh, come on. No, I'm serious. Listen, you do me one more favor, Sam, I'm yours for life. Huh? Some bargain. Okay, where do you want me to bring it? You hand that personally to John Hawk at this address. He's expecting. Okay. Sam, any time you want a couple of million dollars, give me a ring. Lieutenant Kenner. Yeah. Abe Kenner asked me to meet you here. Do you have any luck? Yeah. Here it is. Thanks. Sorry if I put you in any trouble. Oh, forget it. Thank Abe. He's your connection. Uh, do you want a lift? I'm okay. Got my car. Sail away. driver here named Anton Beck. You know what time he usually comes in? I'm sorry, Lieutenant, I don't know. A man's a heavy booker. They call him Hungry Beck. If there's work out, he'll stay out. If there isn't, he won't. What's his car number? You want the rate card? The medallion number. Medallion. Go five six six seven nine four. Go five six what? Six seven nine four. Where's he usually hack at? Wherever the money is. You got one of his trip sheets? It's kind of a wharf rat, isn't it? Yeah, he works the incoming boats. Okay. Don't tell him he had any calls, huh? I'm with you, Lieutenant. Thanks. <laughs> Lieutenant. What envelope? What are you talking about? All right, take it easy, Lieutenant Hawk. The envelope, please. Who are you? FBI. Marie, send Hawk in. Thank you. Hi. Don't worry, John. I'll still get my pension. Do you realize, Hawk, Kenner might very well have prejudiced his retirement? You should have understood if only by implication this is an affair of some magnitude well beyond your competence. Sir, I'd like to take full responsibility for Lieutenant Kenner's action in this case. You've got enough on your hands, Lieutenant. Like what? Like endangering the national interest. How? That's about as direct and final a piece of information as you're going to get, Lieutenant. You've already widened the reach of this thing far too much. You mean by trying to dig up some more clues in a murder case? 
The murder has no relevance. What are you talking about? I had to be circumspect about this, Hawk, but you were warned to clear out of it. Well, just exactly what happened to Ulysses Frost's body? Did it disappear into thin air? That's not important, Lieutenant. We went into that before. Have you got a name or they just call you by a number? Okay, Lieutenant, we're all very impressed. What's wrong with you, Hawk? You were told this is a matter of national interest. Well, that makes personal interest a question of treason, and I plead guilty. What are you doing? I'm quitting. Lieutenant, if you make one more move to involve yourself in this matter, you're going to be arrested, tried, and convicted under the enemy agent section of the National Securities Act. <laughs> truth or this is it. Where's that tape? What tape? I don't know what tape you're talking about. Wrap him up. <laughs> Tell me where the tape is or you'll ship out for good. I'm 
<laughs> they wrecked the place and drugged me. I woke up here. <laughs> I thought you had the tape, too. Now, what is this tape you're talking about? Come on, Tina. We don't have time to play games. What are they talking about? Well, I don't know. I gotta find a way out of here. I don't know what they want. You always were a lousy liar. You know why you don't have any generators? Because of shore power can cut. That means a ship can leave at any time. Now, if you want to go on a pleasure cruise and think about all the troubles you've got, you go right ahead. John, where are you going? I'm trying to find a way out of here. I'm just I'm so scared. Scared? What do you got to be scared about, Tina? Your skin, your image? Let me tell you something. If we don't find a way off this ship, your image is not going to be worth a plug nickel. John. What? I lied to you. Yuli was in touch with me. He came to see me the day he got back from Europe. He wanted me to arrange a meeting with him with the FBI. I, I sent him away, so he went to you. All right, go on. Why did they try to kill him? Was it money? Was it power? Come on, come on. Well, what difference does it make? We'll never get out of here. What difference does it make? Sure. Are you sure? Yes. I'm sorry I yelled at you, Tina. Oh, I'm sorry I yelled back. That's all right. Forget it. Go on. Tell me about Yuli. Come on. Tell me about Yuli. I, uh, I got him a job in, in Europe with NATO. Open courier. You know, carrying classified material between the various powers. Unfortunately, it never paid quite enough for his taste. You uh, know what a hunger he had for the luxuries. Yeah, I remember. Go on. Well, anyway, he got his hands on, on something hot. Uh, had to do with a new metallic element one of our scientific teams discovered in Northern Europe. It, it showed a new technique of making other more what common elements fission aboard them. Anyway, Yuli got his hands on the report. What do you mean? What did he do with it? He tried to sell it to every Allied control office in Europe. The, they turned it down. They wouldn't touch it. Well, wait a minute. You mean he tried to sell it to the competition? He memorized the report, fed it to them a little bit at a time, got their appetites up. <laughs> they gave him a lot of money. Turn around. What did that have to do with the tape? Well, he finally recorded the whole thing on tape. He destroyed the original documents. That's why this tape is so very important. Well, then why didn't it work for him? He, uh, conscience got the better of him. He, he never delivered the tape. He, he came home. He wanted me to fix it with the FBI to turn the tape over to them. Yeah, that's when he called me. Oh, it was too late. Oh, don't blame yourself. I'm the one who's to blame, Joe. That's why they didn't want me to catch you as killer. If I caught him, they'd never get their hands on a tape. All right, let's see if we can find a way out of here. You get on there. Tina! I think I found a way out! Dad, he said something about a fire, a fire or something. Does that mean anything to you? No, I don't know.
tape? The tape. Where? It's behind the fire extinguisher. You all right? Uh, I think so. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to put it in Inspector Hahn's hot little hand. In the bathroom. Move. Okay, let's go. Get him out of here. Now. I suppose you were on top of me all the time, huh? Well, you took your time about getting in here. It was the fastest way we could get them to tip their hands. Well, I could have brought them in a lot sooner if you hadn't kept throwing blocks at me. Well, you're a police officer. We weren't interested in Frost killers. We were interested in that tape and in their operation. Well, just how did you know we'd get off that boat? It was a gamble, and we won. In other words, you used us to get this tape, huh? Where did you get that tape? Ulysses Frost managed to get it to me. He wanted you to have it. Thanks, Lieutenant. Good night. Yeah. Lieutenant, do you get the funny feeling that maybe you've been had? Well, as a friend of mine once told me, Tina, don't worry, I'll still get my pension. 